In the shadow of ancient walls and on the blood-soaked plains of antiquity, the Roman Empire rose not only by sword and discipline, but by the genius of its engineers. The legions of Rome were not just soldiers, they were architects of conquest, builders of impossible machines and masters of destruction. When diplomacy failed, when walls defied words, Rome turned to the art of siege, a grim theater of patience, precision and power. From the burning sands of Carthage to the hills of Gaul, from the deserts of Judea to the forests of Germania, Roman sieges became a terrifying symbol of inevitability. No fortress was safe, no city beyond reach. The Empire S might was measured not only in legions, but in the shadow of its siege towers. The groan of its rams and the relentless rhythm of its engineers hammering the Empire's will into stone and fire. To understand Rome's greatness, one must understand its sieges. For it was through these battles of endurance and ingenuity that Rome crushed kingdoms, erased rivals, and expanded the borders of civilization itself. This is the story of the untold Roman sieges, the engineering feats that turned the impossible into the inevitable. Long before the glory of the Colosseum or the marble of Augustus, the foundations of Roman siegecraft were laid in mud, sweat, and ingenuity. In the early Republic, Rome was just one among many Italian powers, vulnerable, learning, evolving. But even in its infancy, Rome possessed an unmatched discipline in organization and construction. Every legionary was a soldier, yes, but also an engineer, a surveyor, and a laborer. When a Roman army camped, it did not rest under stars, it built. Each night they raised fortified camps with trenches, palisades, and ramparts. In doing so, the Romans became intimately familiar with earthworks, logistics, and defensive design. What began as protection for sleeping soldiers soon became a blueprint for conquering fortified cities. By the time of the Punic Wars, in the 3rd century BCE, Roman engineering had evolved into a weapon of empire. Against Carthage, Rome learned what true siegecraft required. Carthage, the great Phoenician city, was not a mere target. It was a titan of walls, towers, and wealth. When the Third Punic War erupted in 149 BCE, the Romans faced a fortress considered impregnable. Carthage was defended by triple walls, each thick enough for chariots to ride upon, with harbors protected by chains and fleets. Most armies would have balked. The Romans, however, began to build. They encircled the city with a massive circumvallation, a ring of fortifications over 30 kilometers long, cutting Carthage off from land and sea. The engineering task was monumental. Trenches, palisades, towers, and forts built around an enemy city while under constant attack. Every day was a battle of spades and spears, yet under Scipio Aemilianus, the Romans persisted. When Carthage's navy attempted to break the siege through its harbor, Scipio's engineers responded with audacity. They constructed a massive mole, a causeway of stone and timber that closed off the sea gate itself. The Carthaginians, trapped behind their own grandeur, fought like lions, but Rome's engineers choked their last breath of freedom. When the walls finally fell in 146 BCE, Carthage was burned to ashes, its people enslaved, and its land cursed. But beneath the flames lay the lesson that would define Roman warfare for centuries. With enough time, skill, and discipline, no wall could stand forever. As Rome's empire expanded, so too did its mastery of siege technology. The legions became mobile workshops of destruction, equipped with tools, lumber, iron, and the knowledge to turn the landscape into a weapon. Siege towers or helipoli loomed over walls like wooden giants, movable fortresses mounted on wheels, bristling with catapults and archers. Behind them came the battering rams, massive beams tipped with iron, swung rhythmically by ranks of soldiers chanting in unison as they shattered gates and towers. 
Ballistae and onagers hurled stones and flaming missiles, shaking defenders from their battlements. Every siege became a test not only of strength, but of invention. The Roman engineer was a soldier scientist, part mathematician, part craftsman, and wholly relentless. They could measure distance by eye, calculate the arc of a projectile, and construct siege engines from raw timber in days. They dug tunnels beneath walls, undermining foundations until fortresses collapsed under their own weight. They diverted rivers to flood cities, built dams to starve them of water, and raised ramparts higher than any wall. This fusion of intellect and force was the true genius of Rome, the ability to transform warfare into engineering. Perhaps no siege exemplifies this better than the Siege of Elysia in 52 BCE, the climactic confrontation between Julius Caesar and the Gallic chieftain Vercingetorix. It was not merely a battle, it was an engineering miracle. When Caesar's legions cornered the Gauls at Elysia, they found themselves outnumbered and far from home, surrounded by fierce tribes ready to strike. Most commanders would have withdrawn. Caesar, however, ordered the impossible, to trap an entire army inside its own fortress while preparing to defend against an even larger army outside. The Romans began to build two rings of fortifications, one facing inward to contain the besieged and one facing outward to repel reinforcements. The result was a double wall system stretching over 30 kilometers, complete with towers, ditches, traps, and spikes. In between, they constructed pits filled with sharpened stakes. The Lilia, named for their resemblance to lilies, but deadly to any who approached. As the Gauls inside starved and the relief force outside attacked, the Roman defenses held. The engineering was so precise, so disciplined, that Caesar could stand atop the walls and watch both battles unfold, one of endurance, the other of encirclement. When the final Gallic assault failed, Alicia fell, and with it the dream of a united Gaul. Rome had triumphed not through luck or numbers, but through the brilliance of its siegecraft. From that day, Roman engineering became a symbol of inevitability, a force that conquered not only men, but nature itself. Wherever Rome marched, it carried the tools to build and destroy. Wooden towers could be assembled from local forests, catapults constructed from plundered iron, and bridges erected in mere days to cross rivers thought impassable. Every legionary was trained in construction, from digging trenches to laying stone. To the Romans, engineering was not a separate art. It was the soul of their military machine. When Rome turned eastward toward the Greek and Hellenistic kingdoms, it inherited centuries of siege wisdom, but improved upon it with relentless efficiency. The Greeks had given the world the first great siege engines, but the Romans perfected them. They standardized the ballista, turning it from a cumbersome machine into a field-ready weapon that could be deployed quickly. They improved the testudo formation, the tortoise shield wall, enabling soldiers to advance safely under volleys of arrows while approaching enemy gates. They learned to use cranes and pulleys to lift heavy siege materials and to coordinate construction under enemy fire. But it was not only against great powers that Rome tested its art. Some of the most remarkable feats of Roman engineering were performed in distant, harsh lands, far from the grandeur of cities. One of these was the Siege of Masada, a story of defiance and determination in the deserts of Judea. In 73 CE, after the Great Jewish Revolt, the fortress of Masada stood as the last holdout of rebel resistance. Perched atop a sheer plateau overlooking the Dead Sea, it seemed unreachable, its cliffs rising hundreds of meters, its walls unassailable. The Roman general Lucius Flavius Silva faced a daunting task. Direct assault was impossible. A conventional siege would starve both attacker and defender in the arid wilderness. But Silva had something the defenders did not, the might of Roman engineering.
Under the blazing desert sun, the Romans began constructing a massive siege ramp, an earthwork slope that would reach the fortress walls. It was a project of staggering ambition, hundreds of meters long, rising over 100 meters high, made from stone, timber and rubble. Thousands of soldiers and slaves worked tirelessly for weeks under constant missile fire from above. Slowly, the ramp rose, a mountain made by men. When it was finished, the Romans rolled their siege tower up its incline, bringing battering rams to bear against the walls of Masada. The defenders, realizing their end was near, chose death over slavery, taking their own lives in one of history's most haunting acts of defiance. Masada fell, and Rome once again proved that there was no fortress it could not reach, no obstacle it could not move, and no enemy it could not outlast. The siege ramp of Masada still stands today, a silent monument to Roman willpower, a wound in the earth carved by discipline and design. It is a reminder that Roman engineering was not merely about destruction, but about control. Every wall breached, every fortress taken, every road built, all served one purpose, to make the empire eternal. Yet, the Romans did not rely solely on brute force. They understood the psychology of siege. They knew that starvation, isolation and despair could conquer where battering rams failed. During the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE, Titus, son of Emperor Vespasian, demonstrated this cruel mastery. The city was sacred, its defenders fanatical, the walls were strong, the spirit stronger. But Rome had patience. Titus ordered his legions to encircle Jerusalem completely, constructing a massive wall of their own, not to storm the city, but to seal it. The Roman wall stretched for miles, cutting off every road, every escape, every hope. Inside, famine and disease took hold. The people turned upon each other as supplies vanished. When at last the Romans broke through, the city was already a ruin of hunger and fire. The Temple of Solomon burned, its golden treasures plundered, its stones cast down. Titus paraded the spoils through Rome, but his true triumph was not in treasure. It was in demonstrating the power of siege to crush the body and the soul alike. In time, the Roman Empire reached its zenith, spanning from the Atlantic to the Euphrates. Its legions guarded frontiers that stretched for thousands of miles, connected by roads, forts, and watchtowers. But even as Rome expanded, its engineers continued to refine the art of siege. Against the Parthians, Dacians, and Germans, the Romans adapted to new challenges. Enemy forts built from timber, hilltop settlements, and stone citadels hidden in forests. They developed portable bridges, lighter siege towers, and improved logistic systems to move equipment across continents. The Dacian Wars under Emperor Trajan were a masterpiece of engineering on campaign. The Dacians, led by King Decibolus, retreated to their mountain fortresses, confident in their isolation. But Trajan AS engineers built the famous bridge over the Danube, a colossal structure of stone piers and wooden arches designed by Apollodorus of Damascus. It was not a siege weapon, but it was born of the same spirit, the belief that no obstacle, natural or man-made, could withstand Roman design. When the Romans reached the Dacian strongholds, they applied their full arsenal of siege methods. Sappers undermined the walls, while Ballistae pounded the defenders. Eventually, Decebalus was defeated, and Dacia became a Roman province. Trajan's bridge, though later dismantled, stood as a symbol of the empire's mastery of both war and the world. Even as centuries passed and the empire began to fracture, the legacy of Roman siege engineering endured. In the Byzantine era, descendants of Rome continued to employ the same techniques, fortifying Constantinople with massive Theodosian walls and defending it with Greek fire and towers built upon the principles of Roman design. The engineering knowledge of Rome became the foundation upon which medieval Europe would later build its own fortifications and siege engines.
The true genius of Roman siegecraft lay not just in machines, but in systems. The ability to organize thousands of men and materials into a single, coherent operation. A Roman siege was not chaos. It was choreography. While one cohort built ditches, another erected towers. Artillery crews calibrated trajectories, while supply chains delivered timber and food from miles away. Every soldier knew his role, every tool its place. This efficiency turned weeks into days and impossible tasks into routine victories. And yet, behind every wall breached, there was always human cost. For all their brilliance, Roman sieges were merciless affairs. Cities that resisted too long were often sacked without mercy. Men slain, women enslaved, temples burned. Siege was not just an art, it was terror calculated into strategy. To defy Rome was to invite annihilation, and the ruins of places like Carthage, Jerusalem and Numantia stood as warnings to others who might resist. But through the centuries, the engineering feats of Rome continued to inspire awe. Their siege ramps, walls and machines were as much a testament to human intellect as they were to human ambition. The remains of Roman fortifications still dot Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, silent witnesses to an age when conquest was measured not just in battles won, but in walls conquered by wit and will. In the end, the story of Roman sieges is the story of empire itself. How civilizations rise not only through blood and bravery, but through calculation and craft. The legions could not have conquered the known world without the minds that built their bridges, measured their catapults, and designed their encampments. The Roman soldier's sword may have won the empire, but it was the engineer's hammer that built it, stone by stone, wall by wall, siege by siege. And so, as we look back upon the ruins of those ancient cities, the shattered stones of Carthage, the ghostly ramp of Masada, the buried lines of Elysia. We are reminded of a truth that transcends time, that power is not only the ability to destroy, but the capacity to create systems that endure even when empires fall. Rome's engineers did more than conquer walls. They conquered nature itself, bending it to human will. And in doing so, they left behind a legacy that still echoes through every bridge, every fortress, every city that bears the mark of design and discipline. The untold sieges of Rome were not just battles for territory, they were expressions of genius. They were the triumph of mind over matter, of patience over panic, of order over chaos. And though the empire that built them is gone, the spirit of Roman engineering lives on. In every structure that defies time, in every wall that stands against the elements, and in every human endeavor that dares to reach beyond what seems possible. For as long as mankind builds, as long as we design, and as long as we seek mastery over our world, the legacy of Rome's engineers and the untold story of their sieges will never truly die.